<laughs> it was once thought that habitable worlds had to exist within the habitable zone and would require a magnetic field to protect itself from harmful solar wind particles. However, this has since been determined to not necessarily be the case as our understanding of habitability continues to grow. Now moons like Enceladus and Europa have become candidates for housing possible life, but fortunately, they also happen to be protected by the magnetospheres of their respective planets. My question, how has the inclusion of moons further complicated the search for life beyond our solar system? I love that. And I'm gonna add to it, it, will there come a day where we just abandon this concept of habitable zone because if the conditions are ripe somewhere else and is not in the zone, it could have life. So maybe the habitable zone concept is is constricting our creative thoughts of how, when, and where we might find life. Yeah, so I mean, it's great that Fred Dog mentions these moons, right? Europa and Celadus, where you might have this thick layer of ice and you've got all this heating that makes a nice cozy ocean underneath. So one of the things about the habitable zone, like I said, that fine print, long liquid water may be found on the surface here, right? If there is life under the ice, you won't be able to see it from the atmosphere as we know of now, right? So when we talk about the habitable zone, it's about where could we actually look at our telescope and say, maybe there's a biosignature for life here.